In this episode of Tech Unscripted, we're talking computer chips. All right, Vlad, computer chips are everywhere. They're in our iPhones, smart cars, gaming consoles. Give me some more. What else are they in? Smart assistants. Smart uh, assistants. Your smart lights. And they're in the present, but they're also in the future. So if you look at any future trend, things like electric vehicles, uh, smart cars, self-driving, all of that stuff is going to be relying on chips. And the whole chip crunch, as we've been talking about for many months now, is driven both by the pandemic and the logistics and the issues of production, but it's also driven by just out demand outstripping whatever supplies we used to have in the past as well. The initial investment that Japan is making is just one step. Like, this is not going to get sorted out this year, next year, or several years from now. And companies have had production issues to begin with, logistics issues around the pandemic, but now there's just demand exploding as well. So something you said that was concerning as a consumer, right, is this global chip shortage probably won't be solved this year, next year, we don't really know. Holiday season's coming up. What does this mean? We won't be able to get our hands on the PlayStation 5? Or Correct. what else does it mean for us? Well, the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox, they were launched over a year ago now. They have been in short supply from the very beginning. And that is going to continue not just beyond the holidays, it's going to continue deep into 2022. Nintendo cut its forecast for the full year by more than a million Switch consoles. Sony, second most valuable company in Japan, its key product is the PlayStation 5, and it literally hasn't been able to make enough since the beginning. Japan has committed more than $5 billion into supporting the semiconductors to help with the production and hopefully solve the world's global chip shortage. Why is Japan in a position to do that? Well, first of all, that's $5 billion just for this year's budget. Uh, TSMC, which is Taiwan's biggest company and the, the world's key chip maker, is committed to spending something on the order of $30 billion per year. So how confident are you that Japan could help solve this chip shortage? Well, the chip shortage doesn't get solved without Japan. That's just a flat out fact. For us to understand that, we need to kind of segment the supply chain. We talk about it kind of in general, but we don't appreciate how many links there are in the chain, which is thousands. If you look at one of Apple's supplier reports, just how many companies and factories are involved in bringing you a single iPhone, it is literally thousands. Mm. But where Japan's unique position lies, I would say especially, is in providing the tools and the materials for chip making. There's a company called Ushio, which provides laser light that's closer to X-ray frequency, mm -hmm. um, which is used to spot defects in chips. Uh, then you have a company like JSR, which provides these chemicals, which are so pure that a single drop of coffee in two Olympic-sized swimming pools would just be rejected. Nobody else can do it, right? So there are all these Japanese suppliers which feed into the key chip makers, which are TSMC in Taiwan and Samsung in South Korea. So you have the situation where if we're going to sh solve the chip shortage, mm -hmm. even though Japan isn't the key provider of chip making, it is going to be essential to that solution. 